consider this problem. So let's say if we have the series of negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 divided by n squared. How can we approximate the sum of this series correct to two decimal places? Well, in order to do that, we need to be familiar with the alternate series estimation theorem, also known as the alternate series remainder. So let's talk about the basic idea of that theorem. So let's say if we have an alternating series. It could be negative 1 to the n or negative 1 to the n plus 1 times a sub n. So that's the general form. Now, this series has to be convergent, which means that it has to pass the divergence test. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n has to be 0, and also it has to be a decrease in sequence. The next term has to be less than or equal to the previous term. So if you have a convergent alternating series, then the following will be true. The difference between the infinite sum and the partial sum is equal to the remainder. And the remainder is less than or equal to a sub n plus 1. So how can we use this information to approximate this sum correct to two decimal places? First, let's make sure that we have a convergent series. So let's perform the divergence test. As n goes into infinity, what's going to happen to a sub n? Well, we need to know what a sub n is. And a sub n is basically 1 over n squared. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared that will equal 0. So it passes the divergence test. Now let's make sure it's a decrease in sequence. So let's show that a sub n plus 1 is less than a sub n. So a sub n is 1 over n squared, which means a sub n plus 1 is 1 over n plus 1 squared. Now because the denominator of this fraction is greater than the denominator of the fraction on the right, this entire fraction is less than that fraction. So therefore, we do have a decrease in sequence, which means that the series is convergent. So now that we've established that, we can go ahead and approximate the sum. Now we want it correct to two decimal places. So let's say if the answer was 5.4312, for instance, we need this digit to be correct. So therefore, just to be on the safe side, you don't want to set your remainder equal to 0 0.01. Rather, you want to set it equal to 0 0.001. You want this number to be the uncertain digit, but this to be certain. So in order to approximate the sum to two decimal places, the first thing we need to do is determine how many terms we need. And once we have that, then we can add up those number of terms. So let's start with this expression. The difference between the infinite sum and the partial sum we set is equal to the remainder which is less than or equal to a sub n plus 1. Now we're going to focus on this portion of the expression. Now a sub n is 1 over n squared so a sub n plus 1 is going to be 1 over n plus 1 squared. Now we want it accurate to two decimal places. So we want the error to be within 0 0.001, just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to set r sub n equal to 0 0.001. And then now let's solve for the value of n. So what we can do is raise both sides to the negative 1 power. 1 divided by 0 0.001, that's 1,000. And 1 over n plus 1 squared, that's just going to be n plus 1 squared. Now, let's take the square root of both sides. 
So the square root of 1,000 is about 31.6. And so that's equal to n plus 1. If we subtract both sides by 1, this is going to be 30.6. If n is equal to or greater than 30.6, then we need to say that n is equal to or greater than 31, because n can only be an integer. So always round up. So let's go ahead and find the sum of the first 31 terms. Now that's going to take some time, so hopefully you have a calculator where you could just plug this in. So the first term, when n is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, negative 1 squared is positive 1, so it's going to be 1 over 1 squared. The next one is going to be 1 over 2 squared, and then plus 1 over 3 squared, and then minus 1 over 4 squared. And then it's going to be plus 1 over 29 squared, if you continue it. And then minus 1 over 30 squared, plus 1 over 31 squared. Now go ahead and plug that into your calculator. If you do, you'll get that the sum of the first 31 terms is 0.822971. One. Now, just to be on the safe side, go ahead and plug in 100 as well. The sum of the first 100 terms is going to be 0 0.8224175. So in both cases, the sum rounds to 0 0.82. So if you want to round it correct to two decimal places, set your error equal to 0 0.001 and you'll be on the safe side if you do that. Now what happens if we set our error to 0 0.01? Well let's say if since we already set the error to 0 0.001 let's say if we wanted the answer correct to three decimal places and let's say we chose this error. For me personally if I want the answer correct to three decimal places I would choose an error of something less 0 0.0001. And it usually works out in my case when I do that. But let's say if we want to round it to three decimal places and we set the error to 0 0.001. In this case, n would still be the same because we use 0 0.001 in this example. But rounding this number to three decimal places, it's going to be 0 0.823. And rounding this one to three decimal places is 0 0.822. So notice that these answers are not the same. So if you want to round it to three decimal places, I recommend not choosing this as an error, but choose something less, 10 times less, 0 0.0001. And you'll be on the safe side if you do it that way. So let's try a similar problem, but it's going to be a little different from the previous one. Everything is going to be the same, but instead of dividing by n squared, we're going to divide it by n cubed. So 1 over n cubed, it passes the divergence test because 1 over n squared also passed the divergence test. And at the same time, 1 over n cubed is a decrease in function, just as 1 over n squared is a decrease in function. So we don't have to show that those conditions are met. Now, let's approximate the sum correct to three decimal places. Feel free to pause the video and try this problem. So we want this last digit to be accurate. So therefore, I'm going to set my error to four decimal places. So let's start with this. R sub n, let's set it equal to a sub n plus 1. So the error is 0 0.0001. Now my a sub n is 1 over n cubed. So a sub n plus 1, that's 1 over n plus 1 cubed. So let's determine how many terms we need in order for the answer to be accurate to three decimal places. So let's raise both sides to the negative one power. So one divided by 0 0.0001, that's 10,000. Now what we need to do is take the cube root of both sides. So the cube root of 10,000, or 10,000 raised to the one third, that's 21.5. So that's equal to n plus 1. 
subtracting both sides by 1, we're going to get 20.5. So we need to round it up. So therefore, n has to be equal to or greater than 21 if we want the answer to be accurate within three decimal places. So let's calculate the sum of the first 21 terms. So if we plug in 1, the first term is going to be positive. Negative 1 squared is positive. So it's 1 over 1 cubed minus 1 over 2 cubed, and then plus 1 over 3 cubed minus 1 over 4 cubed. Now all of the even ones are negative, and all of the odd ones are positive. So the last term is an odd term. So it's going to be a positive one. This is going to be plus 1 over 21 cubed. So go ahead and plug that in and see what answer you get. So you should get 0 0.901593. So therefore, rounded it to three decimal places, we could say that S is approximately 0 0.902.